This video is gonna be controversial. I'm gonna talk about React.memo, which is an optimization to the way uh, React renders your components and your application. And optimization is controversial. Uh, the main reason being that optimization is tricky. When you add additional code to optimize for something, uh, just by adding more code, you're adding more surface area for bugs. But also because optimization tends to require sophisticated codes and edge cases, you're also making your code harder to understand and to maintain. Not to mention that in the worst case scenario, your optimization can backfire and actually make your application slower. So that's why many people much, much smarter than me say that premature optimization is the root of all evil and should be avoided. Uh, only optimize when you identify the spot, a bottleneck and you measured. That being said, I am going to suggest that you should use react.memo more because there are some circumstances in which it really adds almost no additional code and almost no additional complexity while still making an impact in your application, especially if it's a bigger application with lots of components. It can make your application feel snappier. So I'm going to talk about which cases are these that you can safely use react.memo and considering use react.memo more. But let's take a step back. What does react.memo do? So suppose that this is your hierarchy of components in a React application. I have some app components here. I might have like a header or whatever. I have this, this hierarchy of components. So what happens when you re-render one component in this hierarchy, because for example, its state changed, is that React is going to re-render not only this component, but all of its children and the complete subtree. So all of this part of your React application is re-rendered as well. Of course, when I mean re-rendered, I mean it runs your function again, and then it diffs using the virtual DOM mechanism that we know. So these components here, if they do not change anything to the DOM, they won't actually touch the DOM. But still, making these re-renders can cost. So react.memo is something that you add to, to your component, your functional component, I'm gonna show you in a minute. And what it does, it says, hey, if these components, when trying to re-render, it's going to check the component pro the, the props that the component is receiving. And if these props haven't changed since the last time, it's not going to re-render this component. So going forward, if this component re-rendered, it's going to re-render this one. It's going to stop here and not re-render this component and its subtree, its children. And again, in a big application, this makes a difference. So let me show you an example, an actual example. I have here my zombies application. I have some cards here. Uh, these cards, they can be toggled. Let me show the code. Uh, it's this card.js component here. It's just a div. It has this use state with a boolean. When I click the header, it switches from true to false and vice versa. And then it uses this opened to apply different class names. So that's what makes it appear open or closed. My app component receives the list of zombies from outside as a prop here. It doesn't matter for this example, it could be some API, it could be Redux, doesn't really matter. What matters is that this component receives the list of zombies and then it maps over the zombies to create a card for each zombie. Now, an important thing here, the card contains a title, which is a string, a picture, which is a string, and a description, which is also a string. So the card components, all the props that it receives are strings. Now, you will note that in my application, I also have this brain saved here uh, in my app, which is just a counter. It's there, it's just a counter here. I have this counter set counter, and I have this button here that on click increments the counter, so I can do this. And its purpose is to show what gets rendered. So back in my zombie cards, I'm gonna do a console log here every time it gets rendered. Console.log, and I'm gonna say card re-rendered, and let's put the card title here. Of course, you shouldn't put a console log inside your function. Uh, for anything serious, uh, it should be, uh, honestly inside the news effect 
and then you can do like use effect and let's do the console log there in this case it wouldn't make a difference but especially for the future when react uh, a concurrent mode gets here and and, and some other things that are uh, promised for future versions of react it's important that anything that isn't part of your render is an effect so this will render on this will run on every render i'm not passing any additional arguments to this so let's see how it goes a refresh on time and you can see that every single card gets rendered so classic zombies fast zombies so on so forth if i toggle uh the states here you can see that this card fast zombies gets re-rendered as well that's expected now watch what happens when i click when i click on my counter every single card gets re-rendered well that's because again higher in the in my components hierarchy if my app gets re-rendered and it contains all of the zombie cards as children all the zombie cards gets re-rendered that's the graph that i just showed you so to counter that i can import memo from react not to be confused with use memo which is a different thing i'm just talking about react.memo and i'm just going to wrap this function into memo memo memoize is the function which means that if the function gets calls again with the same arguments it's not going to run the function again so memo and back here just by wrapping that let's see what happens again i'm going to refresh i'm going to toggle fast zombies here as expected the card re-renders because i'm changing the state but watch what happens now when i click print saved the counter is working but my cards aren't re-rendering so as you can see, it's not a lot. You just wrap your function into memo and that's it. Now, there is a bunch of gotchas here. Uh, and, and these are the cases where I don't recommend using memo or at least not without actually measuring uh, uh, if you have a performance bottleneck there. Uh, the way the memo works is that it compares the props object. And if the props object as a whole changed, it's going to render the function, otherwise it's not. And comparing objects, if an object is different in JavaScript, it's extremely fast. Uh, but the problem is, let me uh, uh, try to write something on the code, so here just to exemplify. So if I have like const a equals, let's create like a zombie object, like title is gonna be fast zombies and description, description, is gonna be whatever if i say const b equals a now both a and b are pointing to the same object in memory so a is this object b is the very same object it's not an object that looks like the first it's the very same object the type of comparison that react.memo does by default is a strict object comparison so it just checks if the previous props is the same object which in this case is true and that's not true if you have any changes in the object or even if it's a similar object like const c equals i'm using the same keys and no in values here but this is a different object so a equals b yes a equals c no even though they're identical so what this means in practice is that if we're passing anything that is not a, a JavaScript primitive. If we're passing a prop that is an object or an array or a function, anything that is not a primitive, and a JavaScript primitives are things like strings, numbers, booleans, undefined, nodes, and so on and so forth. So if you're passing anything that is not a primitive, this is not gonna work because it's gonna be a, a different object and then it's not gonna work. Quick example, for example, uh, suppose I had a button here, learn more and i'm going to receive a new prop here learn more callback that i'm going to call on click here on click equals learn more callback back on my application i'm gonna say learn more callback equals and i'm going to create a function here console log clicked 
what's happening here is that for every render in this component, I'm creating a new inline function here. For every render, I'm creating a new function. So when the card compares the previous props with the new props, the function won't be the same. It's not the same prop, so it is, it is going to re-render. It's not a problem to create a new inline function here on every render. JavaScript engines are super optimized for that, but it just won't work with React Memo. Just to prove, if I run it now, refresh everything, uh, if I click brain saved, everything gets re-rendered again because I'm passing again a different function. Can I do something so that uh, my function doesn't get recreated every time? You can, you can use callback, but then again, we are back to adding a lot of complexity uh, to your code. And then we're back to the scenario where you should measure and know for sure that there's a performance bottleneck here before applying this optimization. So my rule of thumb for using Memo, let me get rid of this callback here my, and this button here. So my rule of thumb for using Memo is, does my component only accept primitives uh, uh, as parameters? Yes, great. It's going to use the default uh, comparison for props, which is like this, just a strict object comparison, which is extremely fast and your application will benefit without a lot of, of boilerplate, without a lot of code and additional, no additional complexity. For all other usages, learn how to properly investigate uh, performance bottlenecks in your React application. I might do a video on that in the future uh, and only do when you're absolutely sure and measured that you have gains in that area. All right? But for all the rest, consider using more use memo. Oh, consider using more React.memo.